she was always of Indian heritage and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. I, I can't believe he actually said that shit. I am so ready. Oh, good. Hello, April. Happy Friday. Um, hi, friends. Happy Friday. I, I, I got to address an elephant in the room, April. I, I have to do it. I, I shouldn't, but I'm going oh. to. Okay. Well, you mentioned before we started recording that that you saw some more comments about from people who don't like our banter. Yeah, I did. I said, I, and last week, I feel like we only did like eight minutes of banter, too. <laughs> I, I don't want to be this person who you know fights back against the the audience but i'm gonna say it too bad so sad oh no it's too bad so sad oh. i'm sorry i i i like our banter it, it warms us up because lord knows mm. every one of these recaps of the week has so much nonsense inside of it i need to decompress myself i need to talk to someone on a screen myself because i'm not sure about you april but i work alone in my guest bedroom aka my studio all day all day reading this stuff mm. covering this stuff prepping the content for you yeah. the audience the banter is for, is for my own emotional mental health that's why we banter yeah. and it's all about you tim it is it, it, it this really <laughs> is i mean this is your channel so <laughs> <laughs> but for real I, I love it or hate yeah. it we're gonna banter on this show it just is what it is yeah i make no apologies we're getting fiery can, tim today you can you can skip right on past and get to the good stuff there's you know the episode doesn't happen live so you can watch it later on but anyway april it is good True. to see you um I, you know happy blueberry coffee uh morning to you mm. you're coming live from a new location because behind you is not I your am. normal uh map of lord of the rings or mordor whatever it is that's true this <laughs> mordor is that what it it's is it's just middle know. earth a oh, middle, middle earth, earth my map my bad my bad um yeah so i am actually currently in dallas area staying with my brother who shout out to <laughs> one source roofing <laughs> this I'm, I'm borrowing one source roofing office i'm borrowing a one source roofing coffee mug that i'm there drinking out of and yeah, so it, it's kind of unofficially a one source roofing uh, episode for me anyway. Yeah. Sponsored by oh, one no. source roofing. Yeah, unofficially. Unofficially. Yes, unofficially. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know the quality of their work officially, so don't. I'm just saying, like, don't don't look at me, okay? But yes, no, one source roofing. Yeah, so Texas, and you drove to Texas with your family, right? About, what, 10 hours? Yeah. Well, it was really more like 14, but we drove four of it on Tuesday and then 10 of it yesterday to visit wow. our my niece and my nephew and then I have two brothers that live here and then sit my sister-in-law so I'm traveling again on the road again <laughs> however that song goes <laughs> One of the things I wanted to mention to you is that yes, last week on the podcast we talked about Team Android versus Team Apple a surprisingly large large amount of people did come out in, in, turn, in, in favor of Team Android they sure did, Tim. They sure did. It honestly hurt. It was disappointing to know that, that again, people who find this channel deconstruct from so much, but yet no. are Android users. It's disappointing. No. you. What you're doing right now is the same fundamentalism that we left behind. No. No, because you see, I'm standing <laughs> on objective truth. I'm standing on objective fact. You are not. That Apple is indeed better overall than Android. I disagree. You know, I believed that too when I was <laughs> in the indoctrination camp of Macintosh. And okay, I will but, say I do believe I agree that Mac computers are better overall from my from my experience. But I don't my Google Pixel I like better than any iPhone I ever had. Mm. And that's true. Mm. I have a so, question for saying. you then. Well, actually, hold on. Oh. Let me roll this stinger and then I'm going to ask you my question. <laughs> I had to sneak it in somehow. I forgot to do it earlier. Mm, yeah. Honest question. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, audience, if you're listening or watching, please put this in the comments. I want to know why. I want to know, objectively speaking, why people think that Android is better. Because I will just tell you, as a creator from my vantage point, the fact that I can move things between my Mac and my phone seamlessly without losing any 
compression of uh, video quality, such as using t things like AirDrop, um, iMessage, especially now with the new um, OS systems coming out, you can actually log into your phone remotely and actually view it on your Mac screen, respond to messages, answer notifications, drag things over. I, I do not know what people see in Android that makes them go, I'm gonna give all that up to have an Android phone. Like, what is what is the sell? You tell me honestly, what is the sell? Well, one, they're usually a little cheaper. Okay. Two, when I when I switched to Google like four or five years ago, they had a deal where that you could have unlimited photos mm. for free mm. in the in their cloud. And at that point, Apple kept upping up my monthly cloud storage, and mm -hmm. I was running out of space. Yeah. And and I had to get a new iPhone every two years because the battery would just die. And maybe they fixed that by now. But I had my last Google phone for like four years and mm. it was still running fine. I just got a new one like a couple months ago. Mm. So I don't know. But I will just say with Google, since I use Google as my main browser anyway, my phone automatically connects all my Google photos to my Google Drive to my Gmail. I feel like it's a very similar thing. The only thing that I don't like about having an Android is how Apple does not play nice. And like with the group texting and and how I can't send videos to Apple users. But that is Apple doing that. They are they purposely like minimize the pixels with Android users because they want everybody to have an iPhone. And that honestly pisses me off and makes me want to go harder on Android. Apple can do That's no it. wrong. Okay. How dare you slander <laughs> The holy of holies, the name of Apple. Uh, <laughs> well, that, that honestly that though, at the fixed, I don't though, think in the new update they're they're moving to I think it's called RCS or RC something messages, mm. which should hopefully fix. And this is Apple doing it because you're right. Apple has not enabled the feature for iPhone users, so that is correct. Right. But, but that can should I just hopefully be honest be with you though? Yes. I honestly don't. I don't think one is better than the other. What annoys me more are people like you who look down on Android users like we're second class citizens. It's the I, same I, thing. I can I do just, the same thing with my phone. I just think you're running inferior tech. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm no, a techie. My camera, I promise you, anytime that I'm doing making content with some other creators and they have iPhones, my Google Pixel Pixel's camera always looks be better. Uh -huh. My videos always look better. Okay. All right. Well, I True. guess I'll give you that. Really. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Speaking of of doing things that are wrong and unholy, like owning Android, are there any repentance uh, items that you want to knock out before we get into our yes, very full I, episode? Yes, I do need to repent. I'll try to repent quickly, um, genuinely. Um, last Friday, so a week ago, me and Beecher and um, – people named Laura and Andrew, and they host a podcast called the Sunday School Dropouts. They had reached out and asked us to go with them to the Ark Encounter in Kentucky that is was made and started and run by Ken wow. Ham, the yes. Answers in Genesis creationist, I don't know, extraordinaire. <laughs> I don't know what you call them. But anyway, um, I did not pay for my ticket, the Sunday School Dropouts podcast, Put the bill for that but just by knowing that by being there money had to be given to the ark encounter i feel like i need to repent because it was talking about indoctrination station it was terrible i could literally we could do a whole episode on this but i'll save it because we are doing an episode of our whole what we thought about it and with videos and pictures and all the stuff i've got a lot of stuff um, on Fair. the Sunday School Dropout podcast later this month. So we were doing it for research. Well, I basically. want you to know, April. But I still repent. Only, I repent. I, I, I do forgive you. And I also forgive you, even though you haven't asked for forgiveness, that I was not invited to join all of you to be part of that amazing experience. I forgive you. It's cool. I got over it quickly. I said, you know what? No one's perfect. It's okay. So, um, But I, I, I do want to know, because going to that – Ark Encounter is on my bucket list of places to go, and I have I have an idea for how I would do it. For you though, how shockingly bad was it? Uh, I would say initially it was kind of cool because it is oh. it is kind of this awe inspiring thing when you first get there because it looks massive and it kind of mm. sits in the distance and it's like whoa mm. the Ark. 
Um, and the concept of it's kind of cool, but real quickly it gets dark okay. really fast. And we also happened to sit through an hour long speech of Ken Ham, who was there the day that we were there. Like it was part of the official schedule that he spoke. And that was honest. That was, oh, talk about Christian nationalism and homophobia and transphobia. And then he just railed against Kamala Harris, too. It was. It was really triggering, honestly. I, I, part of me was like, man, I wish this was towards the end of the day and I could just get kicked out right now because I, I already, I was kind of sh saying some things from my seat, but I was trying to compose myself too because I just like, we had more things that we hadn't seen yet. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> but, yes, 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 yes. Okay, fair. Well, I, I'm looking forward but, to hearing yeah. the full recap. Um, and it's kind of crazy that you were there when Ken Ham was there, like, like the legend himself, the man, you know, the name above all names, the guy who started all of this. And then you heard him essentially give a speech attacking Kamala Harris and and all the problems of like, you know, left wing, whatever it is, ideology in the name of good old fashioned biblical truth. Oh, yeah. It, oh, I could seriously go off on this topic. It, like th they even were condescending to christians that believe in old earth creationism like yes. in in plaques and like official plaques throughout the thing <laughs> it was so they were like some skeptics would say this but they're fools and like literally they'd be like because of the bible and i'm like that's not science <laughs> that's not a fact well ken but, ham yeah, definitely was... says that um an old a, a young earth creation is a gospel centric issue meaning if you don't hold to that view you don't believe a real gospel so he's very militant on this which on is on young earth creationism yes young earth creationism sorry yeah, yeah if, if it's yeah. old yeah right meaning if you don't believe that the earth was not created in six literal days it's a gospel issue for him and for also, the world that he occupies yeah he also feels that way about noah's ark there was literally a plaque in there of uh, a snake <laughs> that is supposed to be Satan wrapped around it. And it's huge. And it's, and it's like written in first person. So Satan is saying it and he's like, oh if gosh. I can get you to doubt the ark, I can get you to doubt heaven and hell. See? Yeah. Okay. Wow. There was like a whole like heaven's wow. gates and hell's flames kind of narrative with the atheist professor up top and like comic book. And, and no. There's so many things. Okay. It was, okay. it was okay. straight okay. propaganda. Straight propaganda. Yeah, people Whenever were like it, witnessing to each other. The people on staff were witnessing to the patrons. Moms were witnessing to like their little kids. Like, no, like, Look, everyone died. Yes, it was terrible. It was so terrible. Like I, I went through like, like the the emotions were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe people believe this. And then it was like, oh my gosh, I used to believe this. And then I would see the kids and I was like, oh my gosh, they're being forced to believe this. And then, just like the cycle of sadness anger disgust and uh, it was very triggering i, I, I don't want to sound lie. pretentious or elitist i'm just really glad i don't believe that anymore that's all i'll say i just feel a huge weight off of my own shoulders that i'm not a part of a world that really thinks these stories literally happened that way and if i don't believe them i'm probably going to end up burning in hell forever I'm just really right. glad I don't believe that anymore. I'm sorry. I'm oh, I, I know. Really am. It's... Like, wow. I did believe it for a long time, and I'm really glad I don't. Yeah, same. Same. But then I'm also sad for all the new generation of kids that are probably <laughs> homeschooled that aren't going to get an education and and feel like their entire existence and eternal salvation depends on them believing in this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Why don't we move on to some, because you're going to do a whole recap on this. Let's move on to some actual, uh, some other global outrage that happened this week. Honestly, I, I am sick of talking about this. Here we go. Yeah, we're talking about the Olympics. We have to briefly. I, I must say, April, when, when okay, I was on vacation. Remember, last week I said I'm going on vacation, and I did. And I, overall, we had a good time. It is hard going on vacation with another family that also has two children under four like we all get along great we're great friends but we all have little children so it's kind of like okay how do we keep them going and keep them energized and also tire them out so they go to sleep right you're kind of in that mode we had a good time but then i i saw this olympic ceremony controversy growing on twitter and it became this massive phenomena 
And I still don't understand how it became the controversy that it became. Do you, do you know how there are some times in the creator life where you talk about something because everyone else is, so you want to kind of get in on it to kind of give your opinion, but deep down you're like, why do I even have to spend time or brain cells responding to this? This is how I felt about the Olympic opening ceremony controversy. Yeah, it. everybody was talking about it. And I watched a lot of the ceremonies that night. It was just kind of on in the background. And I just didn't think anything of, of anything. And I should have known, knowing that every single Super Bowl halftime show, every right. award show, every o Oscar, there's, there's some connection to Satanism or the rapture or a sign of the end times. And like I should have known, but it, I like in the moment I was just like, oh, the Olympics. And then, and then afterwards they're like drag queens. <laughs> I swear every month there's a new satanic panic. Like the, So for those of you who might not know that term or be familiar with it, satanic panic was this thing that came out of the 80s where there was like this national freaking out, mostly from like conservative mothers, about their children getting involved in the occult via things like Dungeons and Dragons or other board games, Magic the Gathering, whatever, movies. And it became like this real phenomena of people thinking that their kids, because they were wearing black nail polish or dressing more gothic were somehow becoming Satanists and the term became satanic panic. But that idea, especially in white evangelical spaces, has never really left. I mean, I, as a kid, Pokemon cards, Harry Potter, were all major things. Uh, trolls, the Smurfs, there were tons of things that I couldn't watch or be a part of because of the fear of getting sucked into the occult. And so doing this work now as a creator and tracking all of it, it's, it's wild to see the same ideology just be recycled and targeted at new people. Little Nas X has yeah. had plenty of those um, attacks. Sam, uh, what, uh, was his name Sam Harris, uh, the other singer, uh, the Grammy performance that was, he was all dressed Sam in red. Smith? Sam Smith, sorry, not Harris. Yeah, Sam Smith. Like there's all these things that happen every couple months where some white evangelicals yeah. freak out that Satan has taken over the Grammys or a Taylor or even, Swift concert. Even Taylor Swift's latest album and, and her whole heiress tour too. They were, it's they were like dissecting it and being like, this is a cult. This is sick. Ugh. It's, it's Ugh. wild. And yes. so that brings us to the Olympics, the Olympics. Maybe, maybe you, you don't know what we're talking about. Let me just play a little clip of, of, of part of the ceremony. And then I'm going to show you another clip and then we're going to guess what the controversy could be and then we'll show you what the controversy was so here here's a small clip from the olympic opening ceremony in france in paris here we go this is a a blue man on a dish for people listening on podcasts yes. like he's painted blue <laughs> Okay, we'll stop there. So, yes, we're looking at a blue man, uh, spray painted mostly blue, wearing uh, like a crown of fruit, and he's sitting on a pile of food. And behind him are a bunch of people all frozen. They look to be maybe some people in drag, uh, looks like some cisgender people, maybe a trans person, like a very eclectic group of people behind him. Okay, and then at the mm -hmm. end of the ceremony... Um, they, th this shot was captured. What do you call those things? I don't know. I don't know what they are. <laughs> something, something probably very culturally important that I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, she's wearing, <laughs> but she's wearing kind of like a crown and she's in the middle and she's holding, making heart hands, which by the way, I saw posts saying that heart hands are a symbol for Satanism, by the way. Of course they are. And of course the, they are. Um, so yeah, uh, and that what they're leaning against or standing behind is was a runway earlier in the night, I I think. Right, that's right. That's exactly I'm right. Not. And the people yes. to her left and right are uh, drag performers, people in drag, uh, people in costume, etc. Like it's a very again very eclectic looking group of people, and they're all kind of like making like some small gestures. They're kind of frozen. So th that's the image. I mean, yeah. most of you have probably seen this it, picture. It's gone viral many many times. But it looks like at. there's like 17 or 18 people total. A ton. A ton. Right there. Now, yeah, there's a lot of if, people. If I saw this in a vacuum, not knowing the future, like if, if I was watching this live, 
I would not think for a second, oh, these people are mocking Jesus Christ and they're mocking the Lord's <laughs> Supper. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't put two and two together at all, especially when you watch the video. It, it, the camera is just panning. So someone just someone grabbed a snapshot of this particular moment in the event and, mm -hmm. and then essentially blew it up on Twitter saying, oh, my God, the Olympics are mocking the la the, the, the iconic photo or painting of the of, of uh, Leonardo, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper. And yeah. oh, my God, they hate Jesus. They're mocking Christians. And that took off and went yeah. mega viral. It went globally oh, so viral. viral. People were so mad. They so mad. Like the fury. Candace Cameron Burr, who's Kirk Cameron's oh sister. She, she went on and like gave this kind of like tearful uh... long video of how it was sad. And it made her uh, the, the drama of it all. The, yeah, here here's you go. the thing. Yeah, it's a bunch of. Oh, yeah. Here's a bunch here's of tweets the, we're going to pull well, from this. Yes. Okay. So, a couple things is one I've seen people argue. So the director of that, uh, uh, whatever you would call that performance, said that what they were like actually the opening doing ceremony. was an the homage ceremony. to, yes, to um, like uh, the feast of the gods um, in the Greek. Yeah, I don't. It was supposed to be the feast of Dionysus. Is that how you say that? Dionysus. Uh, you know what? I'm bad at pronouncing names, so yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, Di I believe well, it is. I believe, like, not... I believe it's Dionysus. Okay. So anyway, that's a Greek god. It was a feast of that. That is that is what they were portraying. There's a painting that kind of looks like that-ish, too. Um, but I, I saw on the flip side, so, so the director came out and said, no, it wasn't The Last Supper. It was this. It was... This is the Olympics are Greek, so it makes sense that they were doing a bunch of Greek things. Makes a lot of um, sense. Yes, but I saw a lot of Christians because I had made a video about it, and people were like, "No, it was the Last Supper because one of the peop one of the performers in it shared the side by side of their picture with the Last Supper, and I guess was like, "Yay, the Gay Testament or something like that." Right. They're like, "See, it is," and I'm like, "Okay, even if they were." reenacting the last supper that in and of itself is not blaspheming christianity or jesus because um, if you actually follow the gospel of jesus all are welcome at the table it is inclusive it god for for god so loved the world which includes every single person that was at that feast of the gods or the last supper or however you want to interpret it like it literally does not matter. There, there are so many other things that actually matter. That like the thing, the thing that bothers me so much about. I feel like it's mostly American Christians, but this like conservative, more fundamentalist version of Christianity is the outrage over all the wrong things. Hundred percent. Like we get outraged over cultural things, over art. One, I feel like we don't fully understand art from the get go. We take everything way too personally. But also, where is the outrage on literally anything else? All the gun <laughs> violence, I the know. mass shootings, Palestinian children being bombed. I know. Um, like, even just the, the way Trump actually blasphemes God by coming out and, and tear gassing protesters and holding a Bible upside down and, ugh. It's so obnoxious. I'm tired. I'm just so tired of like, like, what are y'all doing? It's so stupid. And it wasn't, and to be fair, it wasn't just, the outrage was not just over the Last Supper or the, the Feast of the Gods. Like that drag queen section, they were mad over the pale horse that rode in. <laughs> <laughs> in the river they said that was the pale horse of revelation ushering I, in the end times i'm not joking there was also a golden there was also a golden um cow head statue that they are all mad and claiming that they are literally worshiping ball and and the golden calf from exodus uh, uh, again ushering the end times as a sign of satanism um people were mad that celine dion performed because they they claim she's like in the Illuminati and is, is satanic now because a couple years ago she released a gender neutral clothing line for kids and I'm not joking about that you can Google it 
Um, like the outrage, like literally who cares? Who cares? It's a whole other country's opening ceremonies. It is not about you. Um. Yes, yes, oh, April. Yay, yay. No, I mean you're you're totally correct. Look, 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 look. Here's some pictures of different mm. um pop culture references reinterpreting the Last Supper. South Park has done it. The Sopranos have done it. Lost has done it. House has done it. Mash has done it. Battlestar Galactica has done it. Watchmen has done it. The Simpsons have done it. The Expendables, that was literally their movie poster. I'm showing the picture on the screen. The Sopranos again. Uh, here's here's the one of House. I mean, look, Super Size Me, Lost, South Park, like, like, like I said, Star Wars, that 70s show. I mean, this, this, is, this has happened over and over again. But what's the big difference? april what's the big difference why why would they be mad now and not at those other references why i mean what could be the one hmm if i really had to like, oh oh maybe it's because these people are in drag maybe because there's a transgender person here i mean it's it's mm. not actually about the fact that some part of culture reinterpreted what is a very culturally iconic photo which to your point is not biblically accurate at all and has nothing not, not, nothing nothing to do with our faith it has to do with the fact that these people are the folks that were, that that the right wing evangelical world is always warning us about and hates people who dress in drag, yeah. people who are trans, etc. That that's the thing. And to your point, right. I totally agree with you about how it's so evident that that Christians, especially in America, now I do know that globally other Christians were offended. That's not our job to critique. Other folks can kind of handle that. But for me, what annoys me is watching right-wing evangelical Christians get all worked up, get all upset, all frustrated over things that do not abs matter at all. That's why I tweeted that. Yeah. I tweeted this. I said that. I said maybe the reason the world doesn't take us seriously is because it's not genocide, poverty, hate, or greed that gets American Christians mad. It's this. Then I shared the picture of, yeah. of uh, Dionysus. And so to me, I'm with you. I I'm totally with you. It, it is... It is maddening that we have to actually talk about this instead of the genocide of the Palestinians and children whose heads are being literally decapitated as we speak, bombs raining down upon them, right? That's not what gets evangelical Twitter riled up. That's not what uh, commands statement after statement about how the, we're losing the world and how the world has gone to hell. No, it's not the actual hells on earth. It's a man spray painted in blue referencing a whole different culture which makes sense given that the history of the olympics started in greece right and, and and christians going well the world everything's about us so let's interpret it in a way that offends us and then get mad about it like it's ridiculous it's right. frustrating as hell and i think <sighs> and i think it's one thing if you see that and if you really did interpret that as the last supper and you felt you didn't like it it's okay if that's your feeling sure sure but the way that it's like it just became this this massive movement and that the thing that is i find really frustrating is that trans people especially but really all queer people get so much hate like if you are if you identify as transgender you are i, th I think it's like four times i might even be higher than that more likely to experience um bullying and some type of violent harassment and that is happening because of rhetoric like this because totally. you you see headlines that's like drag queens blaspheme christ that just fuels the people in the world that are violent and i'm not saying everyone that obviously most people that were outraged and saying these stuff i don't believe that they would hurt anybody physically but i don't think you people realize the power of their words that they are giving fuel to violent people that want a reason to harm queer people and this is just going to give them even more ammo because you know you they feel like they have to defend their faith or defend christ or whatever they think that they need totally. to do which christ does totally. not call us to do that by the way the last time no, someone tried you to defend must defend christ, your rights yeah well, and the last time in the bible someone tried to defend christ by chopping off a guard's ear Jesus said, put your sword away, and then healed the ear of the guard. 
maybe yes. Jesus doesn't need defending. Like, have we ever thought about that before? Has it ever occurred to us that if if Jesus is indeed who Christians believe he is, the Son of God, the risen Christ, yeah. the third person of the Trinity, the one who will restore the cosmos and make all the wrongs in the world right, does he need us to defend him? Does he really need that? Does Jesus need us to stand up for him? Especially given that we're talking about a painting that didn't even come from the scriptures or from from like Orthodox Christianity. Right. It's a literal reinterpretation of the Last Supper that has become iconic in our cultural moment, but not at all related related right. to the actual reality of who Jesus is in the scriptures. So, you know, for right. me, I'm not I'm not sure for the audience out there. I'd love your thoughts in the comments, but for me, it's another example. It's another example of the very um, weak and narcissistic evangelicalism that many of us have experienced yeah. and have grown up on. Like th this is not a strong faith. This is not a rock solid faith. This is a weak faith. This is a wimpy faith. Yeah. This is a faith that is so fragile that it literally has to reinterpret an Olympic opening ceremony that wasn't even designed for them. It has to interpret mm -hmm. one screenshot that was taken and go, oh my God, we're so offended. How dare they? Come on. Right. It's pathetic. Like it, I wish people could just be honest and say that when they see people living as their authentic true selves, there's something that bothers them deep inside. Because I totally. do think it, when you are a fundamentalist Christian, you yeah. have a lot of repression going on. Uh -huh. You are you have you are constantly in internal conflict with your own thoughts. You're at war with yourself constantly because you're told you have to die to your flesh that your flesh is evil. Yep. So you're you're just pent up yep. a little bit. And yep. I remember because when I was that way and I saw queer people, it made me feel weird because in hindsight, it was I was envious. I wanted to be able to live that freely. Yeah. But yeah. if you, they can't just say this makes me uncomfortable because I don't like it. They say this makes me uncomfortable because you are blaspheming my Lord and Savior, which is also just so stupid because there are a lot of queer people who are also Christians that you have now completely alienated. Mm -hmm. Not that they have, haven't already done that, but yeah, just Jesus does not need you to defend him. No, he doesn't at also, all. Also, the da, Vin the da Vinci painting itself, you could argue, is blasphemous because it paints <laughs> Jesus as white and yeah, he was not white. Could. Right. Absolutely. If anything, so. Jesus needs people to represent him well, not to defend him. And there's a, a big difference there. So I, 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 yeah. I, I didn't want to talk about the Olympic controversy term used loosely but because it's still very much in the psyche and zeitgeist of our moment i wanted to at least do that but we have bigger fish to fry april we have much bigger fish bigger fish uh, to fry and talk yes. about here's one we, we should get into um let's see there we go so here we go trump let's get let's get into trump because trump has had quite the week on two different fronts so we're going to cover both of them first trump spoke at the believers summit hosted by turning point usa now, we're going to get into who was there um, and what this Believer Summit actually is. I have a lot of thoughts. I've actually been – these events used to be called the Pastor Summits, hosted by Turning Point USA, and I've been to two mm. of them. So I've been to these events before. I was not able to go to this one because I was on vacation. But here's what Trump said. And honestly, I, I, I don't think – I'll be honest with you, April. I think that some people – might be kind of spinning this in a way that I don't think Trump necessarily intended, which is saying a lot for me because I'm very critical of Trump. But let's mm -hmm. hear what he has to say, and then I'll, I'll get your thoughts. And okay. again, Christians, get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. Okay, so there you go. Um, Trump says to his audience, I love you so much, Christians. If you vote in four more years, you're not going to have to vote again. Now, now, let me ask you this. How do you interpret this statement on the surface? On the surface, to me, if I'm being honest, be honest, I would think that he's just saying, I'm going to fix everything and you won't have to vote again. That's how I take it. Right. But some people I mean, took I it do, as Trump saying, yeah. 
I'll never leave office again. And by the way, I want to be clear. I don't think that that it, it, it's a crazy stretch to think that because yeah. Trump has made the joke that he would only be di- uh, only be dictator on day one. Project 2025 is a pretty radical thing that even though Trump is trying to dis- to distance himself from, he's still very much tied to, right? So I and get the concern. And he did then he also shared a video I think right after the last debate with Joe Biden of him that someone else made that he reposted of him saying Trump 2024, Trump 2028, Trump 2032, Trump 2036. And it went all the way up to like 2060, which obviously he'll be dead by then. Um, I mean, not unless he's superhuman. I don't know. Right. Um, but yeah, but he has, I mean, to be fair, he has alluded to staying in office. And I think even Mike Huckabee, well, I don't want to say, that because I can't remember, but there has been someone in the Republican Party that has suggested that Trump could get rid of the two term limit. Totally. So I what, what I don't want to say here is that, oh, my gosh, these these fears that Trump would never leave office is unfounded. We saw what happened on January 6th. We saw what happened last election. I think in this context, though, what he was communicating was I will fix all of your problems. So, so you'll never have to vote again ever not so i will stay in power forever now again maybe he meant that and when he was asked to clarify the statement um who i think it was julie julie kelly it was one of those fox news interviewers she tried to get him to clarify laura ingram thank you she um she tried to get him to clarify he really didn't um so that is kind of concerning but i what's more concerning to me is is hearing trump say oh god yeah god i'm listening well, he said, this is what he said in his clarification when pressed. The okay. statement is very simple. I, I said, vote for me. You're not going to have to do it ever again. It's true because we have to get the vote out. Christians are not known as a big voting group. This time <laughs> vote. I'll straighten out the country. You won't have to vote anymore. I won't need your vote. You could go back to not voting. Uh, how is that a coherent statement? And by the way, fact it's check, not. evangelicals he- are the second largest voting block in America. They are the second yeah. largest voting block in America. <laughs> I know. He's, he's, he keeps saying that ch- Christians typically don't vote. I'm like, I don't know what Christians yeah, do Yeah, what are but. you talking? You're at, you're, he's <laughs> at an event called the Believer Summit with literally 30 major right-wing commentators and theologians in front of t- probably five to 10,000 people all cheering on his name. And he's calling them my beautiful Christians, like they're his minions. My beautiful Christians, <laughs> like my be- like, listen, uh, huh? L- listen to the statement again. Listen to that part. It's so weird. And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years. You know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm not Christian. I love you. Get out. You get- <laughs> I'm sorry. My beautiful there Christians. Was also- like, ugh, I yuck. I did see some discourse, too, that people think in that sentence you just played that he says, I'm not Christian. Yeah. That's, did you see I, that? that well, that's what I heard him say. Did he not say that? I'm not Christian. Hold on. Listen to it again. Okay, I think he up. meant to, he was trying to say, I'm Christian, but just stumbled over his words. Hold It'll on, be listen. fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm not Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out. And- I don't know. I, I, I. Because he kind of says, I'm a, nah. He's like, I'm a nah, Christian. Well, if, if he said, I'm not a Christian, that would be the most truthful thing he said in a long time. Like, yes, Trump, that you're is not fair. a Christian. I mean, I, we all know he's not. <laughs> well, Dr. I, James I, Dobson, yeah. though, insists he's just a baby Christian, April. He's just a baby Christian. All right. He's, has he said the prayer? The sinner's prayer that that solves everything. A hundred percent. I do want to dig in for a few minutes here at, about this believer summit. These are a few of the names that were here. Uh, mm-hmm. Eric Metaxas, we've covered him before. Uh, Seth Gruber, Megan Basham. Now she has a new book out called Shepherds for Sale. That is, uh, I'll just say it's getting fact checked into oblivion, and she's insisting that that this is like an attack against her and her credibility. She is a Daily Wire reporter, and uh, we'll cover her book more later on. But the reason why, and and there's more names even beyond this screenshot. The reason why I pulled up this screenshot, friends, if you're watching, is because in the bottom right-hand corner is someone named Doug Wilson. Now, I I gotta be honest, friends. Mm -hmm. When I saw Doug Wilson at this summit, I thought to myself, that's a really big freaking deal. That's a red alert moment because... 
Doug Wilson is, I'm putting this very charitably, a, a very controversial figure, even inside of conservative Christianity. Meaning, I know a lot of conservative evangelicals who go, Doug Wilson is off his rocker, he's dangerous, we should stay far, far away from him. And he was at this event platform as, as a person to speak. Now, I, I want to share with you a couple of different quotes from Doug Wilson in the past and also a story so you know exactly who we're dealing with, okay? And by the way, a lot of this I'm getting from uh, is, a, is a website called Examining Moscow, I believe is the name. And they do uh, a lot of fact checks and a lot of deep dives on Doug Wilson, what he's doing in Moscow, Idaho. So here's one on his views on sex. Now, I want to just do a trigger warning. The next follow couple quotes are incredibly racist, sexist, all the words. Just be prepared. Here's one. This is from Doug Wilson, examining Doug Wilson in Moscow, Idaho. Quote, in other words, however we try, the sexual act cannot be made into an egalitarian pleasuring party. A man penetrates, conquers, colonizes, plants. A woman receives, surrenders, accepts. This is, of course, offensive to all egalitarians, and so our culture has rebelled against the concept of authority and submission in marriage. This means that we have that we have sought to suppress the concepts of authority and submission as they relate to the marriage bed. True authority and true submission are therefore an erotic necessity. Source is Doug Wilson uh, from his book, How to Be a One Woman Man, Canon Press, 1999, pages 86 or 87. Any thoughts, April, on that first quote? Uh, puke? <laughs> yeah, puke, puke, puke. <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that nonsense. Ugh. Well, let's, let's keep Ugh. going. Here's another one. This is from his book in 1996 called Slavery, Southern Slavery as it was. Quote, slavery as it existed in the South was not an adversarial relationship with pervasive racial animosity. It was a relationship based upon mutual affection and confidence. There has never been a multiracial society which has existed with such mutual intimacy and harmony in the history of the world. That's his take on slavery. That's again, 1996. The book is Southern Slavery. Mutual as it was. affection. Yes, mutual affection. Absolutely. And the oh last thing God. I want to bring up, and this is this is for me, is the icing on the cake. So uh, oh. that's oh, that's the wrong one. My bad. The cake's uh, not yes. already iced. So, and again, friends, this is from examining Doug Wilson in Moscow, Idaho. It's an actual Facebook page and a Twitter account. You can look it up. So Doug Wilson actually married off a pedophile in his church. In September 2005, Stephen Sittler reportedly molested 25 children in Wilson's denomination. He's evaluated by medical professionals as a, quote, fixated pedophile, meaning he's at high risk to reoffend. Only one family goes to trial, but Sittler is judged guilty for, quote, lewd conduct with the minor and sentenced to life in prison. In May 2007, Sittler is released early with a lifetime probation status. June 2011, so six years later, Pastor Doug Wilson officiates the wedding of convicted serial pedophile Stephen Sittler to a young woman who was a member of his church. And there's a picture of Doug doing this. The couple who had been introduced by one of Wilson's leaders. He became engaged on their second date. March 2015, Katie Sittler, his then wife, gives birth to her child. And in August 2015, Sittler admits in a polygraph exam that he has had, quote, trigger warning here, abuse, contact resulting in actual sexual stimulation with his five-month-old son. That's that's oh Doug God. Wilson. Yeah, I know. We, we should be vomiting. We should absolutely be freaking out about this. We should be Did he go back outraged. to jail? I, I don't know. I believe he did. Oh. That's a small snippet of some of the things in Doug Wilson's repertoire. He's also said that uh, being gay is worse than slavery. It's more of an abomination than slavery. This is who Turning Point USA Faith brought to their conference to speak in front of thousands of Christians at the quote unquote believer summit. Oh my gosh. Is your head exploding? Doug yet? Wilson's also, yeah, he's also very Christian nationalist. Oh, extremely. He, he wants, and I know this because we've interviewed him before, okay? We, 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 uh, we had a journalist friend of mine actually interview him for a segment. He said in his interview with the journalist that in his lifetime, he wants to see Christ is Lord put into our Constitution. Okay, uh, here's the connection, friends. Again, if you, if you watch the show regularly, this will make a lot of sense. We covered on um, last Wednesday, we did a, uh, a review of a talk by Stephen Wolf, who wrote the book, A Case for Christian Nationalism. Doug Wilson's press, Canon Press, published that book. They're all in the same mm. world. These people are all cross-pollinating. And now Doug Wilson has his foot in the door 
at Turning Point USA speaking there alongside people like Ali Stuckey, um, David Barton, you know, all these other people, Eric Metaxas, much more mainstream figures in the Christian nationalist world. So it should not only terrify us, it should also demonstrate that when they talk about groomers and and being a, and watching out for sexual predators, they don't actually mean it because they have no problem platforming people who actually mar married off a pedophile to a woman in his church. And that man then yeah. admitted in a lie detector test that he essentially was simulated by his, his infant, which is so gross, I can't even say it without wanting to vomit. That's oh. what we're talking about here. I know. I know. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. You know what? That is something that would warrant outrage. Yes, it would, April. Fundamentalist Christians. Yes, it would. There's some. You want outrage? You want to get furious? There's a good yeah. example. By the way, Doug Wilson has also called women the C word in some of his blog posts before. The C word. Oh, I'm sure he has. Uh, yes. What a lovely yes. human being. He's a, he's a lovely human. So I, I I really I couldn't find a good place to kind of cover this in our in our weekly content. I said, you know what? I'll save it for the recap because it is just it is my mind. It, it, it starts to short circuit trying to fathom how people like Charlie Kirk and this whole world of Christian nationalism that insists they're here for family values and protecting kids and also that 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 they're not racist and all this stuff <laughs> would then platform someone like Doug Wilson without skipping a beat. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Fix it, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's like oh, uh. I know, I know. Okay, I know it's bad. Let's keep moving on because there's a lot more to cover. We're running out of time. I, I do want to cover this. So so Trump this mm. past week spoke at the National Association of Black Journalists convention. This is a big deal. I'm gonna play just a few minutes of this. <laughs> because it's worth listening. I've so only read the headline. I've not watched it. So I'm glad I get to watch it. So this is, a, I pulled out about a five minute clip from him walking on stage to the first couple questions. We will pause throughout because it's five minutes long just to kind of give some context. But let's just see how this went. It, it's all over social media, but here's how it, it went. Here we go. For President Donald Trump. So right now he's walking in and no one's applauding. Not one clap. A couple of cheers. <laughs> okay, so I, I want to point out that the applause that you just heard, that little, was the only applause for him walking out at this convention, which is just wild. So this is happening in Chicago. He's sitting down with three different journalists. Let's just hear how it went. Mr. Let's President, hear. we so appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. Hmm. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Okay, hold on. I got to pause. I got to pause it. That's a great question. That's a great series of questions. They're all factual things. Pay attention to how Trump answers a very direct question loaded with examples. Just pay attention to this answer. Here we go. Well, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. <laughs> And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for 
black workers and black entrepreneurs uh, done so much. And, you know, and I say this, uh, historically, black colleges and universities were out of money. They were stone cold broke. And I saved them and I gave them long term financing and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I, would love I think it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> That's than, my answer. Better than President That's Johnson who signed the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work, in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. I let really me, do. Let I me just ask a, a follow-up. Okay, there. So that <laughs> that was way worse than reading it in the yeah, article. It's so bad. It's so bad. A couple of things. Your first. So off, hostile. So hostile. Trump says in this rant, this uh, honestly incoherent, all over the place rant, where he actually never addresses the question. He says that that the reason why they're 35 minutes late is because they couldn't get their equipment to work. Um, New York Times reports actually what happened was that Trump was not a fan, that Politico was fact-checking this conversation in real time and was furious about that and delayed the start of the interview. Now, I can't verify either of these claims. I'll let you choose, audience, what you think is probably makes more sense. Um, but I just found this first question to be... First off, it's a hard-hitting question for sure, but it needs it's a good question with receipts. Trump's answer isn't really an answer at all. Well, I think I think the um the association itself was already getting a little bit of pushback for even having Trump. Hmm. And so it would make sense that her first question would be hard hitting too, because it's like, no, we're having him to actually have this conversation and ask these t hard questions. Trump wants to claim that black voters love him and want him right, and that he's done right. more. Well, come face black voters. Right. And journalists. And actually answer their questions. Yeah. And journalists. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Not an answer. No answer to be found. No. Does not Does not address the fact that he did indeed sit down for dinner with Nick Fuentes. That's who this reporter is talking about, the white supremacist who denies the Holocaust. Uh, no, no, skirts that, goes to personal attacks, attacks the venue, uh, um, hypothetically or allegedly makes up a lie uh, that, you know, the equipment wasn't working, which is why we're so late, and then points to saying that he's done more for, he's done Wait, how did he say it? He's essentially been as a, as good for black people as much as Abraham Lincoln was, like, like like since Abraham Lincoln. And the journalist is like, well, how about these other presidents who like the Voting Rights Act and you know like ending yeah. desegregate or uh, uh, ending Civil Rights Act, Lyndon right, B. Yeah. Johnson, right, right. <laughs> like no, no. Trump jumps over all those hurdles. He's the best since Abraham yeah. Lincoln. Okay, so that's question one. Let's get into the next few and just just to kind of hear this one's so wow this is just it's something it's something sir and then we'll move on to other questions here uh, some of your own supporters including republicans on capitol hill have labeled vice president kamala harris who is the first black and asian american woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a dei hire is that acceptable language to you and will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define diversity, it? equity, inclusion? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me is a, that that is. Give me a definition the then. Would you give me a definition DEI. of that? Give me a definition. Sir, of that. I'm asking you a question. No, no, a you very have to define question. it. Define the define it for me if you. I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say no. I think it's maybe a little bit different. So. Uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much, and she was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black 
until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a either black one. College. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody is a- should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really don't have know. said? I mean, there you go. There you go. I, I, I can't believe he said that. He really said that with a straight face. And uh, to be very clear about this, because, of course, you know, um, fact-checking this stuff is important. I have the, where is the article here? Um, let me pull it up real quick. I, I had it. Maybe I don't have it anymore. Um, <laughs> Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris, has <laughs> has identified as black like s- since day one because she is biracial. She is black, and her mother is, um, is Indian. She went to a historically black college. Um, so this idea that, you know, one day... Vice President Harris just decided to turn black is so ridiculous. <laughs> it's so stupid. It is uh. so it's so anti-intellectual. I I can't believe he actually said that shit to a, a room full of black journalists who know their shit. And Trump's like, "Well, she she just decided to be black one day." Like, what are you talking about? What on earth are you talking about? It's wild. I wonder if he thinks that that can happen since he kind of it seems like he decided to turn orange one day but okay here i found it i found the the website here this is from politifact the one that was fact checking him in real time harris has identified as black woman from a multicultural family harris has embraced her black identity and multicultural background in several ways when she was at howard university harris pledged alpha kappa alpha inc a historically black black sorority As a U.S. Senator, Harris was a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, supporting her colleagues' legislation to strengthen voting rights and policing reforms. I mean, this is like, this is who she is. This is part of who she is. Um, And it's just, it is just crazy to me that, like, Trump would really get on stage at at this place, at this event, and say that with a straight face. Wow. It is. Wow. Wow. I honestly, I mean, so I read the article, but hearing him, he just says it so confident. He he is wrong so loudly, so, so loudly. confidently, so loudly, and that's so insensitive too. Like the, he's clearly lying. There is no way he didn't know that Kamala Harris was black. I know. There's no I, way. I, there's absolutely no he's he lies all the time and i've said this you yeah. said this people have said it he lies more than he tells the truth he lies about everything he lied about his own inauguration numbers in 2016 why why would you do that he lies about everything everything and why would you say that in a room full of black journalists because you're a you're like what i don't know what to say like it's terrible to say anywhere I but especially to the people you're trying to win over I know. that you need to win over. I know. Oh, my gosh. I know. You know what, though? Honestly, in my opinion, the Harris campaign, all they have to do is play clips from that interview. Like, just play a few clips and run oh. that. Run that all day. Because it is painful. That's going to be in an ad. It, that, yeah. It was painful. All this journalist did, and by the way, the interview only devolves from there. Like, it, it just continues to kind of head down this trajectory of just what is happening. The, the journalist asks Trump direct questions with sources. Like, these are factual things that yeah. she can prove. And his response is typical to attack, to evade, and then tell this journalist with a straight face, no, I answered your question. No, you didn't. You didn't mm-hmm. at all. You did not at all. Now, are, but are we surprised, right? Like when white supremacist groups, when David Duke from the KKK endorses people like Trump, that should tell us all something. But right wing media is so effective at spinning propaganda. Even these realities, Trump sitting down with Nick Fuentes for dinner, for example, they just get overlooked, even though he actually did yeah. that. It, it kills me. And it kills me that 81% of white evangelicals are going to vote for this guy again. If the data holds up from the last, last election cycle. Yeah. I mean, but these people are the same types of, 
of groups of people that would probably go to the Ark Encounter and listen to Ken Ham speak. And literally, he had a graphic in his speech that showed one side was the biblical worldview and the other side was the secular worldview. And on the flag on the biblical worldview, it said one race. And the flag on the secular worldview said racism. So you're dealing with people that don't see color right and you know quote exactly. unquote right that believe racism doesn't actually exist and if it does exist it's only a sin issue and it's on an individual level yeah and yeah it's like I it's agree. just so it's it's so backwards but i just want to give props quickly to rachel scott who was the person who interviewed she's an abc correspondent she killed who it. was the one doing the interview with trump because she held her own and she, she did. did not back down mm -mm. and i think when you when you are interviewing someone like trump you have to be strong and she did not she did not let him bulldoze her mm -mm. so mm -mm. so props mm -mm. to her and I, props I, to her yeah and that was that was at the national association of black journalists so yeah that, yeah power surprise he agreed to go there like I'm surprised his team even lets him go and talk because <laughs> he, he just digs <laughs> digs his grave a little bit further. I know. Deeper. I know. He really does. He absolutely does. One thing I wanted to mention before we start wrapping up today. Hey, look, we're only at the hour mark and we're way ahead of schedule. That's always so good. Is I, I did want to mention that um, there is some news that the Project 2025 director has officially stepped down amid backlash from Trump which is very interesting. So friends, we've covered Project 2025 now a couple of different times and we're gonna to continue to do so. It's a massive playbook, 900 pages long. The book's about four pounds, full of um, recommendations for the next conservative president to enact whenever they get into office. Now, people have done a really good job tying this to Trump and the MAGA world, and for good reason. We'll explain why in a minute. And Trump in in response has been forced to say, no, I have nothing to do with this, which <laughs> there's been so many examples of Trump alluding to either the CEO of the Heritage Foundation or to or, or JD Vance demonstrating his connection to this. So I don't buy that for a second, but whatever happened, um, this the, the director of the project has stepped down amid backlash from Trump. I just wanna say, and then April, I want your thoughts. This doesn't change anything. Okay, don't don't think that this is somehow like, oh, look, like like they're backing down. No, they're absolutely not going to back down. And here's why. Let me just show you this little this little image. Now, th here we go. Now, this might be hard to see on your screen, it might be hard to make out all these organizations, but there's about 100 or so organizations here, uh, Turning Point USA, the NRA, et, et cetera. And they have all these dots and lines connecting to Project 2025. This graph is showing you how many organizations, how many conservative right-wing organizations are a part of this project. So like we've said before, you don't build a coalition of 100 plus conservative organizations, pull, uh, pour millions of dollars into creating a 900 page playbook, only to have the, the guy that you know is going to become the nominee very quickly uh, say, I've never heard of them. Who's this? Who, uh, Project 2025? I, I have no idea. That That's not how it works. That's not how it works. So yeah. I would argue that for Trump, many elements at least of Project 2025 are going to be a huge part of his campaign. Yeah, and I saw that, and, and I don't think they gave a specific reason for why he, the director was stepping down. It was kind of vague, but it did come after Trump's backlash. Um, and supposedly I read that, that Trump was upset because the guy who had stepped down the director was, was trying to tie Trump to it and was being like, no, yeah, Trump was part of this or, or, you know, was, was being more showing more of the, the actual through connection to right. Trump and Trump didn't like that because project 2025 is getting so much backlash because it's insane. It's, it's insane. actually like authoritarian and so Trump's trying to distance himself. But I also think people need to realize that there is a ton of overlap between Donald Trump's Agenda 47 and Project, 2020, Project 2025. There is a lot of overlap. A lot of the policies are the same. There are yep. some things that Trump is distancing himself on, like abortion. Um, but that does not mean that his administration 
is not still going to try to implement Project 2025 right. because right. a ton of people in power in the Republican Party right now and who are trying to get seats do want to completely ban abortion, do want to criminalize it, and they want to do extreme things, which they can do on a state level, even if Trump himself distance himself. Yeah, one thing we have to be aware of is that I think if anything, Project 2025 um, has 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 they've overplayed their hand with it. Meaning they've shown they 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 showed too much too quick of their ultimate agenda, right? Yeah. So right wing spaces know it's like step by step. Again, think about who the last GOP nominee was before Trump, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. Now, how far have we come? in the past decade or so from Mitt Romney. Pretty freaking far. Mitt Romney wasn't even at the the last RNC convention when Trump got the nomination, right? So it's it's yeah. little bit by little bit, a little more dehumanization, a little more racism, a little more authoritarianism, a little more um, undoing rights for people. Okay, we overturned Roe v. Wade, but don't worry everyone, we still want to go back to the states. Not ultimately. Not ultimately. Ultimately, they want a, they want a federal abortion ban. Now, Trump might not want that as a person, but the people that he'll bring into his, into his administration, the people that he's rubbing arms with or shoulders with, the people that are helping to create policy for the government, absolutely do want that. They absolutely do. And Project 2025 is one of those playbooks, as big as it is, that demonstrates exactly what they want. And it doesn't end anywhere yeah. good unless you're at the unless you're at, you're at the top of the hierarchy uh, for these people. So it's important to realize that. I mean, b bottom line, because the, it's not even just the person; it's the person and their administration and those people's per, uh, uh, in those perspectives from those people and what they want in office or in power, etc. It, it, it's a very big deal, and the reality is most Americans are very much against most of the policy recommendations of this project and also agenda 47 by the way to be clear yeah. um, and that's why i think that trump is distancing himself because he knows that the more people hear about this project and see what's inside of it the world they're going to say we absolutely do not want that so that's my thoughts yeah and i would just say too even just seeing how trump behaved in that interview um at, at the black journalist conference yeah that is what we would see if he were elected again i i like freedom of the press. Like, I, I think we could have a real lack of information coming from the administration if Trump is elected because he's just going to be combative like that. He could close off press conferences. Like, that's, you know, not to be all fear mongery, but that's a glimpse of what could happen again in if he were to, to win. Well, I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to fact check this. So let's just say that this is alleged. I'm pretty sure in his initial presidency he did do things like that where he kept he, he rejected certain press credentials from certain news publications yeah. to be inside the press room etc you know I yeah mean, if even, they asked like too direct of a question or something yes, he didn't like yeah right i mean and again even in this interview um i'm sorry what, what's her name i'm blanking on the journalist's name um, rachel scott thank you yeah even with rachel, rachel scott, scott um he says oh you're from abc that's a fake news organization like he's still maintaining the same yeah nonsense that he's maintained since 2016 that, that 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 these people and these journalists are fake news meaning they're not trustworthy yeah uh, anyway so i i completely agree with you april 100 percent. i mean it's just it's so clear if you just read what his allies want if you read what these people are putting together and don't forget turning point usa a big endorser of project 2025 just had president trump speak at their believer summit Turning Point USA yeah. was the first organization to work with Dream City Church after Trump got convicted on 34 felony counts to have Trump speak at that church. So, again, you, you would have to be foolish to really think that Trump has no idea about this project, about, about its aims, about its intentions. There's a reason why he is their man. Yeah. He has no idea about Project 2025 in the same way that he didn't know Kamala was black. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. I totally agree. Uh, okay. Well, listen, are there any, yeah. um, I don't know, for tweets of the week, I don't, I don't have, I couldn't find a bunch that were super great. We could pull up some of the Olympic ones that are pretty top tier and, and rate those. Yeah, let's just look at some of the Olympic posts. Okay, I agree. I agree. I will, yeah, I will, I will say there's so many things that we still 
could talk about that we haven't. Like, I don't want to brush past the whole JD Vance couch phenomenon that has taken over <laughs> the meme world, which is amazing. And then his dolphin woman search, which yeah. is also weird. And then also just the democratic shift to start just calling MAGA weird. Yeah. Which they don't like. They don't like. I, I you know, we I, could talk about that more more later, but it's there's just yeah. a, there's a lot of stuff happening. It's, I it's, know, it's, I know. I don't think we're gonna have a slow week for a while. We could have. I tell you this all the time. We could have a daily show. We really could. We could do this every morning for a half hour to an hour and cover all the stuff because there's so much happening. And maybe one day we'll we'll do that. All right, let's get into some of these. You want to read this one? This is a good one. Can you read that? Sure. Um. So the, yeah, there's four pictures from the Olympics. You've got the the white horse, the golden calf, Marie Antoinette's. Uh, decapitated head and then the blue guy that, that i'm sure he has an official name i don't remember what the greek name is that we talked about earlier the post says are you awake yet if it's not demonic it's not attractive must be the motto of the 2024 olympic opening ceremony filled with blasphemous mockery of god was presented to the world and the satanic plot was drank by millions that were unaware of the agenda of hell as faith-filled <laughs> christians how do you sit in silence, the pale horse of death and hell from Revelation chapter 6, the golden calf representing Baal singing the Olympic song, beheaded Marie Antoinette doubling as the great whore in the scarlet dress, the blasphemous drag mockery of the Last Supper? Silence is no longer an option. I, I love when people here. say that, like, they, like they've ever been silent. <laughs> You've never been silent. Come on. Uh, also, that's let me one. Uh, just a, okay. a ran random question. When you grew up, did your pastor pronounce it Baal or Baal? I always the heard it as Baal. Baal. I always heard it as Baal, too. And then I started saying Baal, like in whatever, like TikToks and stuff. They're like, no, it's Baal. So that's why I said Baal. But I've always heard, like, the prophets of Baal. Nah, tomato, anyway, tomato, continue. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll have to ask yeah. Dan McClellan. He'd be the person to ask. Like, give us what's the official pronunciation. All right, that's one. Uh, here's a good one. Okay, says many people think the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games was a mockery to Christians, but I think it was a rapture bell that just <laughs> rang. The pale horse says, "The rapture bells uh, are ringing." <laughs> and we'll do one more. Um, let's see. You have a f you give me a few here. Do we do this one? Oh, the golden calf. This this was an, another big sign of the end times. Yeah, they're literally worshiping a golden calf. In the Olympics opening ceremony, Golden Calf was all caps. Of course they did. Of course they did. They did. <laughs> it's just a bull, guys. It's just a statue of a bull. <sighs> Which there was, other, there was also some kind of Greek. I think it was Greek. There, I read the actual explanation of what that bull represented, and it was not the Golden Calf from right. Exodus. <laughs> Shocker alert. Like Not everything is about... <laughs> a right-wing conservative fundamentalist interpretation of the Bible or the world. Like, like statues But we love of, centering ourselves. We love it. We love it. I mean... We live we, for it. I, I do think that... This is complete conjecture. But I think that people in France are like, really? Like, this is what you really think? Like, you think us celebrating our culture and, like, the, the, the Greek heritage of the Olympics is all about you and how you interpret parts of the Bible. Like, seriously? You really think that 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 this golden bullhead is a reference to the golden calf in Exodus and that we're worshiping it? Like, you really think that's what we're doing here? That that, that has got to be deep down in the psyche, especially of some of these organizers, of them thinking that way. Like, you've got to be kidding me, right? Like, you're joking. We had a blue guy who looks more like a smurf than he does anything else. And your response was, right. you're mocking Jesus. What? What? In what universe? What multi-universe <sighs> is this happening in? It's really just stupid. It's just so stupid. <laughs> it's really just stupid. That's <laughs> It is. No other way around it. Uh, anyway. All right. Yeah. Listen, you're 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 in Texas on vacation with family. I don't want to hold you up. Good recapping, of course. Friends, would love your thoughts. Oh, I have a big announcement. I forgot to mention it. You are coming with me officially to Theology Beer Camp. 
Okay, friends. Yay! If you if you listen on the podcast, we have like an ad spot for this. But if you're on YouTube, you probably have not heard about this before. Every year, I go to an event called Theology Beer Camp. It's hosted by Trip Four. It's happening in Denver, Colorado this year, October 17th to 19th. It's an amazing event full of unbelievable theologians, tons of podcasters, and a lot of people that you get to meet in person. And this year, not only am I going, as I do every year, podcasting, but but April is joining me as well. Yeah, you're over here now. April, you're coming out with me, and we're going to try to make an actual in-person live podcast conversation happen at Beer Camp. So, friends, I recommend if you want to meet people, connect with people, hear some amazing theology, hear from some amazing podcasters, and just be around other folks who are trying to find the better way forward in your faith. Beer Camp is a great place to go. And yes, for those of you who like beer, your ticket includes unlimited amounts of craft beer from all over the Denver area. It's a great time. The link is in the the description or show notes of this video or podcast. And you can use a promo code. You can use one of two. You can use promo code TNEHobbit. That's my promo code. That'll get you 50 bucks off your ticket. Or now that April's going, we have one for April as well, which I gave you. It is pulling it up here. Drum roll, please. April at Joy 2024, all caps. 50 bucks off your ticket. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yay! I'm excited. It'll be a good time. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And, al- so. and also, if you're in the DFW area and you need a new roof, you can call my brother. There we go. At one source roofing. <laughs> there it is. Awesome. A, a trustworthy person. <laughs> a trustworthy. <laughs> Fair enough. April, good talking to you, friends. Love your thoughts in the comments. Talk to you all later on. Goodbye. Bye.